Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, Strainiacs, and well, thank you for tuning in to a special edition of The Strain After Show here. This is a short little interview with Robert Maillet, who plays the physical body of the master on FX's The Strain. He's had a very long career, and guys, if you haven't seen him, you've probably seen him, if that makes any sense to you. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. So... I want to just go through this really quick and like kind of talk about how you got involved with uh, with the strain to begin with because I mean it's such an amazing show and it's such a show that a lot of people wanted to be in but you never know how people kind of got involved in the project to begin with. My involvement, well, I well Guillermo, I was approached by Guillermo del Toro, which uh, he approached me, he, he offered me the role as to play the master. And it's because my experience with him, working experience with him, uh, working on Pacific Rim with him, which he did offer me a role in Pacific Rim without doing an audition. So wow. he, twice he offered me a role to play in his, uh, you know, in his, to play his characters. And uh, so yeah, six months before, it was six months before they started shooting, started shooting the pilot where he offered me the role. As a master, so of course I had to read the books. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I read, so I read, so to understand what what was the world, what was my character from, and what the whole world you know, created. You know, and so, uh, yeah. Was and it a little just, bit? Was it a little bit intimidating to to know that you're going to have to put on like every scene you're in, you're going to be in full prosthetics. Every scene, it's going to be what is it, five hours of makeup in the chair just to get ready for one scene if you have to shoot it. Not actually, not that long. Actually, it's, it's three hours for makeup. But no, I'm, I'm used to makeup applying on me. I'm used to that from the previous work, from 300 to uh, to Percy Jackson. You know, uh, uh, lot of, 300 was the longest one. Actually, it was five hours. Oh wow! Which is pretty long. But uh, no, I for me, no, it's great. To, to, to play, it's pretty relaxing when you're on the on the chair when you're talking to some. The two guys, Sean and, uh, and Steve, who are, who are playing the makeup, and they just talk about anything, everything about movies. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, it's a, it's a good afternoon spending time with them while they're applying the whole thing. And uh, no, it's not stressful for me. It's used to it. Actually, it's a routine. Plus, I have to wear it all day, which is 12, 13 hours. You know, with the makeup, with the uh, master makeup on too. So sometimes I do sleep with it. And I... <laughs> <laughs> it becomes it a... an issue. It becomes an issue when you eat when I mean, it's lunchtime because it's messy, of course. So you have to do always clean it up or repair and stuff before before you know when breaks over. But no, it's it's actually it's not that bad. You know, but, you know it's kind of nice. Actually. <laughs> you have to you have to get up early before. Everybody else, of course, you know, so it's, uh, you pick you up at around five in the morning or something, but just because it takes so long to put on. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm used to it. it. It helps for me to get into character when you see them, when you see myself with the, with the uh, master face and stuff. It's, I can make facial movements and it, it really helps get into the, the whole thing, the whole character. So, <laughs> with the character of the master, it's it's everyone knows this is going to be an iconic show to begin with. When when they were developing it, everyone had such high expectations, and with the choices they made in what the master looks like, what what are your kind of what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you when you're seeing it in person, like is it is it terrifying to you, or is it kind of do you kind of have different thoughts of where the inspiration for its look came from? Uh. 
I knew the inspiration where it came from, and I do love when I when I first saw the concept art. Uh, this is a couple months before I started shooting. It was it was amazing for me. You know, it was powerful, you know, and that's what the master would, would be. He's powerful and, and disturbingly lo looking as well. It's just scary, just, you know. And he does have my, in a way, he has he does have my likeness. So he, of course. <laughs> Within the books, he took it from when when the master took over the body of George Sardou, the nobleman, back in you know 300 years ago, who suffered from gigantism, which I don't, by the way. But uh, <laughs> uh, so I, yeah, I do, I do understand. This is all Guillermo. This is all. I mean, he created, he envisioned it, and of course, it's a lot of creature effects guys and sculptors who, who put it to life. And, and uh, no, it looked amazing the first time I saw it. It looked yeah, beautiful, and it, 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 for me, it really did tell me how to perceive the character in a way. And the, the arrogance—he looked like he was very arrogant. And, and a lot of the homage as well, because Guillermo is a big fan of old, old vampire films like Nosferatu, and even the remake with uh, Tarkovsky. Uh, uh, which uh, so very opposite with the ears and the and the rat teeth. And no, I, I, I was blown away by it. I really was. And I still do today. And, you know, and, uh, it, is, it is interesting with the uh, the whole thing with the... Because at first, the first part of the series, which I was covered, I was uh, I had I had the nose. But the Guillermo changed his mind when the, the scene with Oberst, uh when he changes... Ah, uh, the makeup, when he puts all the makeup on? He realizes that, of course, the the, the Stigua, the vampires, have no nose, like in on the books, in, based on the books. So he, he decided the master wouldn't have a nose, and that's how, so half part, halfway through the, uh, the season, the shoot, with uh, the piece really removed my nose. Which added, for him, for him was important, because with the nose, I looked like Robert Maya, and without it, it looked like the master. So then for me, for me, it helped too, because without the nose, it is kind of visually disturbing. <laughs> you know, big, big hole there, it's kind of unpleasant to look at. So that's, that, that helped really help to, you know, to the character very, you know, very much. How heavy is the makeup? Because a lot of people were saying that it looks like it weighs about 50 pounds on your shoulders, and you're walking around all day in this. And like, do they even think about you? And they're like, "Hey, we're gonna shoot all his scenes today," or "No, we're gonna make him get into makeup every day for three weeks." And even if we're like, "Oh, let's film pickups today. Let's film pickups tomorrow too." <laughs> the makeup was fine. The wardrobe, you know, the wardrobe. Yeah. The makeup was fine. You know, it didn't, didn't uh, bother me at all. Uh, the wardrobe was it was heavy. It was hundred pounds actually. Oh, the wow. cape, the cape itself. The huge cave, which they ordered the fabrics from from China, and uh, it's beautiful job they did on the cave. But uh, it was uh, for, I, remember, I remember the first time I, I wore it in the wardrobe fittings, and, and it was heavy. It was heavy to move around with, and uh, and I was uh, uh, and plus it's not only the cape I'm wearing underneath. I, I'm wearing no uh, period clothing as well. I have a jacket. I have a, a vest. And uh, I have uh, suspenders holding my pants. On my <laughs> pants. And that's just because when Master took, took over the Motley on the uh, Sardou, this is back back during the period of time, you know, he was a nobleman, so he still kept the clothes. Even though you don't see it, you haven't seen it yet in, the, in, the, in this season yet, but I have to wear it just in case. And so layers and layers and layers of clothing. So I was uh, I, I wanted I wanted to make sure I had a, a vest underneath all of that with ice to cool me down. Which oh I, yeah. Which I did, did, which added a little more weight to it too because I had two uh, packs of ice in front of me and on my on my back as well, and then putting putting the wardrobe over it so it kind of looked, looked a little bulkier, but it saved me because if it wasn't for that I would have melted like <laughs> like a bag. <laughs> That's that's insane. But when when you're when you're doing a character like the master, it is uh, it's it's crazy. You're running around. You're in you're in a hundred pounds of clothing. You got ice packs on. You got you got to stay in character. What 
do you think that like your work as Kurgan has helped you in your in your physical acting and having to portray things without having without being able to speak really? Because I know that they have a different voice for the master himself, but sure. you are everything that is the personification of what he emotes in his body language. Absolutely, it's all physical. It's all, the, the, the makeup itself is all telling a story. You know, that's pretty much what it is telling. You know, and uh, the way you move, uh, it, I learned a lot. Of course, I don't. I'm a guy who doesn't complain a lot uh, at all. I mean, I'm, when I was offered the role, I was so privileged that he offered me. Think Guillermo did, offered me. So I, I can take, I can take abuse. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I do speak. I do speak as the master, but I'm dubbed. But um, I speak my lines just to help to help the actors, and uh, and uh, but uh, yes, I'm definitely, of course, uh, Robin Downs, who is a wonderful voiceover actor, who's just a voiceover master. Uh, yeah, my physical, I guess, my past when written wrestling, it really had to tell the story with your body, and I can I can, you know, the way I look, of course, that's how how I get gigs and supposed to play the henchman, the bad guy, or just the way I look. <laughs> I can I can play the intimidating factor, you know the imposing factor, and but as I know that the the, the master the Guillermo wanted something specific how the master would move how uh, vampires move, and so he hired uh, Robert, uh, Roberto uh, Tepanela. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his last name, but he's a uh, he's a he's a he's a uh, dancer professional dancer, but he's there for how he was with us. Campanello, I'm sorry, but he was with us to train the vampire movements. All, all events you see in the show uh, were all trained by him. He had, he had, he had a band school, so of course it's kind of funny. But uh, he trained specifically with me how, how the master would move, and and because his body is all contorted, you know, mm -hmm. he's over 300 years old. I mean, thousands of years old. But that body's 300 years old. So over time, the body gets twisted and contorted and stressed. And Garama was something inspired by the old, the older films, called Nosferatu, the way he moved and silent. And that really, it really did help me how to get into the, the whole character thing and how to move. Because the master doesn't really, like I say, he moves around a lot. He runs around, but it's crazy. <laughs> Good thing it's CG, so I didn't have to do that. <laughs> But most, the most part, I'm very still. For the most, you know, for the most part, when you see close up, I'm very still. And uh, and I think better when you're still, when you don't. It's, it's kind of dangerous that way, because you don't know when he'll go nuts. He may act like an old, an old vampire, like an ancient vampire, which he is. But when he's he's an animal, when he wants, when he's hungry, when he's he just he's fear, you know, he's fearless. I mean, he's just powerful. You know, well, we saw him. We saw him in the first episode crush somebody's skull. So I mean, he's. he's... Well, that was. I, I hurt my hand doing it too. <laughs> Wait, really? I, you know, yeah. You know how tough it is to crush a guy's skull in. It's really. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You think but you'd be used to it by now? That. What was that? You think you'd be used to it by now? That's <laughs> right. But yeah, because it, it obviously it wasn't it wasn't the actor where it was a plumbing the head obviously. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the head was uh, collapsed, a, a prosthetic head, a dummy head, you know, it was able to collapse. But there was an edge that wasn't collapsible, it was kind of the, the, the end part of the ear, I suppose. So when Guillermo said, go, go in, get angry, you know, so I thought of something to get me off angry, like a guy cut me off uh, in traffic one day. <laughs> so I basically gave all my concentration on, on that memory. And just went nuts on him, and and of course you're not looking, you know, really when you're finishing the guy sculling. So I did hurt my hand doing it, and I pulled my hand with blue and black, and then I had to continue doing it for repeatedly Ooh. several takes afterwards too. So for the whole week I couldn't push, I couldn't push weight, <laughs> couldn't use, my, oh. you know. But uh, it was worth it to do it, you know, because it is a powerful scene. That's a great way to introduce the master. You know? Oh yeah, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing scene, and it's everyone kind of wonders why, but it also it it just sets the it sets the tone for who the master is and the power well, he exudes. 
it explains the master doesn't care about humans. Basically, like Guillermo was saying many times, that that's why he did the scene. It's like somebody drinking a, a Capri juice, and when you're done, you squeeze the the, the, you know, the box and you mm. throw it away. That's pretty much how the master treats humans. Basically, you know, <laughs> pretty much. He's a drink. Like he's he's a drinker of men, and he crushes the can on his forehead. You know, when he's done, he just crushes, and that's the whole idea, the whole point of it all, really. Can I ask about that scene? Um, do they, when when you're crushing the skull and the, then they have the body of the, uh, not the captain, but uh, the CDC guy, do they make do they make the the prosthetics that you're that you're crushing? Do they make it smaller so the master appears larger, or are the hands that you have attached just much bigger? The hands, well, I do wear gloves. The hands are gloves. I mean, you put them on. You put them on as gloves. I mean, I do have big hands. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, how tall are you? It's hard to tell, I do, but I do have, you know, I know that they can. So putting the gloves on, yeah, it, it does make it a little bigger, especially with the, the middle finger, mm -hmm. the towel on I have, and the, the, the freak, freakishly, you know, fingernails. <laughs> it makes it look bigger, of course, which might, you know, this, that, this, well, it's pretty much proportion. And the head was all proportion with the actor as well. It's just my, what I wore, the suit, you know, the, what makes me look, I'm, bigger than than life and you know it's crazy but uh yeah i do have you know there's a reason i got hired for the part so. <laughs> well jim watson uh jim watson who plays young satrakian of course you know jim um sure. we talked to him the other day and he was talking about how when you crush his hands in that scene in in the in the work camp he's like no like he, he really does have big hands but do you do you feel very powerful in those moments where you're like lifting somebody up just by your hands, even with the the things attached to them. Absolutely, you feel, when you when you put the when you become the master, you do feel powerful. People back out. People back <laughs> away from you. When you enter on set, they just get, they look at you and then you back away. And that's normally in my life. People do back away when they see me, but not with the master. They even more. They go even further away. You know. <laughs> But they're they're no, you do feel powerful. You do, and you you you're you know because whatever scene you're doing, you know he is master. He's the, I think he's the most powerful character I ever played, really. And you do feel you know part of the scene, what he is and what he can do. You do feel, you know it, you, yeah you do feel it, and it, 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 which is great you know for me. I mean. It, I try not to get my head big, it's big because of it. <laughs> I don't tend to believe it, but uh, but you do. You really do feel you know, powerful with it, you know, with the whole, especially when you're crushing his hand, and especially when he sells it too. So, oh yeah. You know, he's a, Jim Jim is a pretty very very good actor, and uh, I, I really thought he was in pain, especially like, well the scene with the uh, when I turn Urquhart, you know, Richard says Simmel, uh, when I turn him, when he screams, when I open him up. And he screams. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a great actor. He's, so, he's, he's, you know, he really gets into it, and he, 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 he freaked me out. I really thought I really heard him. <laughs> so so you, it's great, you know. For me, it really helps the the scene. You know, helps my character to motivate. You know, it's yeah. You, you do feel powerful. Well, you've had the you've had the three scenes that that really display that. It's where you're crushing the head of the CDC guy. It's where you're ho you're breaking Satrakian's hands, and it's when you're holding Corey Stoll by his face, and That's just right. laughing in his face, and doing this monologue about how you are the drinker of men, and he is nothing to you, and you're kind of comparing him to Satrakian in a way in that scene. Um, do you, is it ever like kind of awkward on set when you're holding Corey Stoll by the neck, and you just kind of want to stop and be like, wait? Well, it, I mean, it is weird. It is. It is kind of weird. Yes, it is surreal. The way I look, you know, it's. It is. It, you know, it is over the top. It's just, you know, <laughs> but you do. You do tend to laugh between between takes and stuff. You know, but during sometimes you just laugh. You know, you, you just lose it sometimes. <laughs> but uh, you know, it did. For me, it, it worked for me. You know, I wanted to make him disturbing. You know, the makeup told the story about the master. Whatever people's opinion about it, it's supposed to be scary, disturbing, what it is. And for me, it was important to be, you know, I don't know. He was, he's, he's a predator, but he's, he's, 
it's kind of creepy. I want to make him creepy, and that's the, my, my my whole take on it. Because he is arrogant, you know. He he's just, like he's just making fun of him. He could have crushed F right there if he wanted to. He's just playing with him, you mm -hmm. know, because he knows he has power. He's he's he has, you know he's he's everything under control. So I just played him like, you know, like he's just mocking him, which he was, you know. Do they? But, uh, really get into it the scene you know it really works you know, you know when especially a guy like Corey he really sells it he's a great actor too you know it's it's it works the scene works you know luckily he had some good visual effects to help me too make it look good too <laughs> <laughs> how in, how intelligent are we supposed to assume that the master is because we know he's all powerful and we know that he's very smart but there's so much going through with with Richard Samel's character and 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 Eldritch Palmer in the show are we to assume that the master is kind of the has the master plan or he's just using these people and they're using their resources to kind of develop these schemes well I, I mean he is he is intelligent for sure he's been around for four five thousand thousand uh, thousand years and uh, he does use people of course he is uh, you know he's a, he's a very savvy politician politically as well you know he knows how to manipulate people in power and uh, he does use them, you know, obviously what, what it does in his own, you know, wants to basically what they take over the world and he, he'll, he'll influence and manipulate people. And he does have a, a lot of intelligence, which is kind of cool to, to, to see, to this big giant <laughs> fire, you know, that he is dangerous because he, he, he can see, and plus he can see everywhere as well, but all his vampires. You know, to, to, you can see through them what's going on. But he does have intelligence, you know, he's been around a while and he learned a lot of things from humans. He, for him, what he does, for him, what he does, he's, like I said, he's just hungry. He just, he's hungry. He wants the blood. So, for him, there's nothing wrong, wrong what he does. You know, he deserves it. But so, but he seems... He seems, he seems, you know, he seems, he saw a lot of stuff worse than what he did, like the concentration camp, the yeah. whole, you know, the Holocaust, you know, humans can do far worse than the master does, and all the wars and stuff he's been you know, involved in the past before that, a lot of atrocities caused by humans, not by the vampires, so what he does is nothing, you know, he just, he wants power, you know, the reason why he wants power is because he wants, he wants blood, you know, he wants control of control. So we have we have the finale of the strain coming this Sunday, October fifth, on FX. Um, it's been an amazing show so far, and you guys have already been picked up for season two. We know that that's happening. I, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get my facts wrong, but um, what? Without giving any spoilers away. Can we expect anything amazing from the master in the next episode for the finale? Is this going to go out with a bang, and is this going to leave fans just wanting more and just r really crying and wanting that second season right now? Uh, it is, as like you said, it is a big, a big episode, the last episode, and uh, so yeah, it's going to go out with a bang for sure. And uh, you'll you'll see the master a lot. Uh, you'll see what, how you know tenacious he is for sure, how tough he is. But uh, you know. And uh, yeah, it's good. You'll find a lot of people's thoughts about the finish, how it's going to end. You know, won't expect it to. I would say people who haven't read the books. You know, people who read the books would probably understand what's going on. But uh, but uh, for, for, for people who didn't, you know, they'll, they'll get a good a good twist and surprise. The expectations, what they thought they knew, you know, it's, it's a lot of twists and turns. And I think people will be presently surprised by it. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us at AfterBuzz TV, Robert. Um, can you tell your fans where to follow you on Twitter and just shout out any projects you have coming up that you'd like people to tune into and keep track of you with? Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, follow me, follow me on Twitter. It's Robert underscore Maya. And uh, my project, well, I am coming back. Uh, uh, thank you. I am coming before the uh, the, the uh, New York uh, Comic Con. Okay. Uh, okay. The first one actually uh, for the uh, for the for the strain because they're, they're doing a, a launching the DVD release in December, and uh, that's next week. I'll be there between the seventh and the 9th of October, and I'll be there in New York. 
Oh, wow. Dark and Eternities and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right, guys. Well, if you want to see Robert Maia, go to New York Comic Con October 7th to 9th and uh, watch him on the finale of The Strain this Sunday, October 5th, and season two. I'm sure you're going to be back for that. <laughs> you are the master. Um, thank you so much, Robert. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can talk again sometime. Hope so, too. Thank you for, thank you for having me on. All right. Bye. All right, guys, this has been uh, a interview with Robert Maia here at AfterBuzz TV um, for The Strain After Show. Be sure to check him out at Comic-Con New York. Be sure to watch the finale of The Strain. And be sure to go to iTunes, rate and comment, and subscribe, because we read your comments on the After Show on Sundays, and you guys get a shout-out, so definitely check that out. Guys, I want to thank you again for listening, and we will see you next time on The Strain After Show Specials after the soundboard loads and I can actually play the outro music and get out of here. But, you know, that's a fat chance. All right. Bye, Robert. Uh, there we go. All right. See you later, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.